All right, welcome back to another episode of Guilders One Playthrough in Nightfall. If you're following along with the playlist, uh, you know that we just finished the Tie Hark Orchard quest. Kind of an annoying quest. It was a it was, or a mission. It was one of the I think it's the only solo mission in the game. Kind of glad to get that over with. But we have a primary quest now, which is All's Well That Ends Well. And I'm pretty sure this leads us to Boca and will allow us to get another hero, which I'm pretty excited for because it's going to be a Mesmer hero, I believe. I'm going to go with a Fever Dreams con uh, Condition Fragility build. I'm going to use Margaret because she has Poison and Burning and Bleeding. And then I made Elias a really weird build, but I wanted to try this Soulbind build, uh, Elite, which seems pretty cool. It punishes healers for healing a specific target. And then I also gave him a minion, which is not that great. I might change this to, uh, I might change it to just a regular bone horror. I need to get him a, a death magic rune because level 14 is quite low. Um, the reason why I'm thinking about doing bone horror instead of bone fiend is because the energy cost, but... Yeah, he has 40 energy. Yeah, we'll just do Bone Horror for now. And then he's got three conditions. He's got Weakness, Cracked Armor, and Diseased. Plus mine, I have Dazed and Deep Wound. So we got a lot going on. The only one I'm really missing is Blind. Uh, it might be nice to have a Blinding... A Blind somehow. Can't really figure out how to work it in. Uh, maybe some earth magic with or an air magic. Um, but yeah, let's just try this out. All's well that ends well. If you've been watching my videos as I put them out in chronological order, you know I'm I've been uh, running some of Sorrow's Furnace with Slash and. Uh, uh, he's busy right now, so that's why I went back to the Nightfall campaign. But, man, that's given us a lot of trouble. Hopefully we fix that. We finish that up uh, soon. Sometime this weekend, I hope. Got some collectors. Ooh, that's a pretty nice energy axe. A caster's weapon right there. That's a pretty nice domination staff, too. It's not as good as our 2020 staff, I think. But it's not horrible. These are really good, um... These are really good items for... Uh, our heroes. Interesting that there's two channeling items, weapons. That seems a little weird. Uh, especially since there's no ritualist... There's no ritualist heroes yet, but this protection prayers uh, rod is pretty sweet. Good for Talcoro. All right, let's keep going. Let's not make this episode a million hours long. I'm excited to see the fragility spam here. Level 16 illusion. I thought, yeah, I guess 21 is the max damage for fragility. We have Elemental Hunt, so I'm not going to pick fights with random enemies unless they're Elementals. Alright, already made it to the next next uh, Resurrection Shrine with no enemies fought. I think because of the bounties in Elona... Okay, now we can fight plants. They they put kind of kind of a lot of resurrection shrines. It seems like. Oh yeah, let's get a let's get a buff here. It's only fifty bucks, so and I have some lock picks I can use on these chests. All right, let's do this. Uh. 
No monks here. I'm kind of curious to see how Soulbind works, but there's no healers right now. I wonder if that works on self-healing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I'm always surprised by the fragility spike. It's really overpowered. That's nuts, man. Um, yeah, I wonder if that works on self-healing. Like, if if you cast this on a enemy, and then they use a self-heal, will they take 60 damage? I think so. Lockpick was broken, but max... Max, uh, illusion rod. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Kane. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. No! I didn't mean to do that. This one. Oh, inventory's full anyway. Lucky, lucky. Where is it at? Oh, it's right there. Um, Not good, but... We can put it on um, the Mesmer hero that we pick up. 13 illusion magic though, that's pretty high. Can't believe I lost it. Look at the value though, 384 gold. It's not horrible. I don't really like the damage while enchanted. It's not great. I need to get her a new bow so I can put this vampiric bowstring on her and make her like a barrage ranger or something. Kahani. Prince Boko rented the theater out. When it comes to picking performances of Vinyo, Prince Boko is pers persnickety. A persnickety one. It's not a common vocabulary word. It could be the perfect time to schmooze Boca into helping the Istani fight Varish. Persnickety. The Grand Court of Sabelke. I think there's some good elite skills around here. I don't know where at, but... I want to get some more Dervish. That's why I've got Dervish as my secondary. Not sure how I missed the boss. I think it's over here, maybe. Didn't really fight any enemies there. Very interesting. What? What's the point of this place? It's a skills trainer. Anything new? Wastrel's demise. I think I want to pick this one up. Basically, you want to use it on enemies that you can continuously interrupt. It's kind of like Wastrel's Worry, but instead of doing like spike damage after a couple seconds, it does continuous damage, almost like a Chaos Storm. Target foe and all adjacent foes to that foe take damage and additional damage spells in effect. Yeah, let's try that out later. Price of Pride. They lose energy if they use a uh, elite skill. That's pretty niche. Discharge. Oh, it's an enchantment removal. Spear Shackles is not great. Might be good against Dervish though. Because Dervish already have energy management issues. And then... Since dervishes do like AOE attacks, they'll lose 15 energy per attack, actually. 
kind of want to pick that up too. I never really understood the point of hypochondria. Like, why would you use hypochondria over epidemic? Like, this spreads all negative conditions and their remaining conditions from target foe to adjacent foes. This is the reverse. Transfer all condition from foes to target foe. It doesn't say anything about remaining conditions, though. I wonder if it resets the conditions. Then it might be worth it. This is pretty good for, like, removing Aegis. Party-wide enchantments. All foes. All of that foes' party members also lose that same enchantment. That's pretty cool. And I think I'll pick this one up just for, like, a troll troll build. I'm thinking about, thinking about skills that I'm going to use in the uh, Fort Aspenwood on Monday. Okay. So I think we're still in that same area. I don't know if they're connected or not. Yeah, I think you can just run around it. It's a really weird layout here. And they never really explain like how they get this technology of like floating buildings and stuff. Like are the are the Vabians magical? Where are my trivia experts at? How come the Fabians have these floating cities? Very curious. Looks like we missed a bounty. I think I need to go this way. Yeah. Persnickety. <laughs> I'm trying to remember I'm trying to remember that that uh word. Still haven't found a good inscription for this shield. Here we go. Here's the scout. And it's a Balthazar. Yeah. Not gonna waste gold on that. Plants. Okay, let's do this. No he no monks saw no real usage of um of uh soul bind. Except actually it would be really good if it if it does punish self healing, it would be really good against elementalists. Because elemental elementalists usually use that um that one ability that heals per cast that would totally punish elementalists take 60 damage every time they cast a spell with as long as they have the you know what i'm talking about energy energy restoration or whatever it's called that would totally punish them Serial garment, do I get um, glittering dust from that? Perhaps. 14, oh my gosh. That's like 350 gold just from that. Yes, I retained it. Look at that. And we got a serpentine reaver. Never seen this skin. Look at that axe skin. That's cool. Alright, let's see if this is worthy of costs. Okay, vampiric. Max armor. Uh, upgrade. The improved sale value. Insp inscription, not worth. Let's try and remove that. Can we... Uh, can we keep the weapon? And remove the inscription. No, we cannot. Totally wasted it. Great. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, let's put it on this. 
then we can sell that 450 gold to sell that I think the higher the requirement on weapons, the higher the gold value also. I might be wrong. But yeah, like this is really expensive. 450. I'm really curious about that soul bind now. Oh my gosh. Searing flames. Why does it just nuke my whole team? No one died miraculously. That was crazy. Okay, beware of these elementals in the future. I need to get some inventory space. Like victory tokens. I don't know what those are for. I don't know what these Wayfarer marks are for. I'm going to use just this just to get Margaret up to level 20. Oh, they're using Energy Surge. That's why. I think these... Uh, Give me glittering dust also. Let's test that out. One pile. That's it? What a... What a ripoff. I want to head over this way because I think... I think there's some bosses in this area. I want to get some use out of this signet of capture, you know? And, yeah, this renews after killing a boss. What's my Sun Spear at? Level 7. Ebon Dust Aura. Here we go. There's those numbers I'm looking for. Ryan the Chosen. That sounds like a monk name. Or a warrior. Is it a warrior? Yeah, it looks like a warrior. Oh, it's a paragon. Go ahead and switch targets. Yeah, he's casting that soul bind. I don't know if it's doing any damage. I'm certainly doing damage. He just has so much health. There we go. I guess I should have brought a Paragon as a secondary. Here. Shezzle. Shezzle Slow Reaper. And there's buried treasure here, too. That's what I was remembering. I knew this area was important. It's a dervish. It's destroying my minions there. Let's get these clumped up, guys. Okay. Ebon Dust Aura. 
Elite Flash Enchantment. When you cast this enchantment, all nearby foes are blinded for one second. For 30 seconds, if you are wielding an earth weapon, your melee attacks deal plus earth damage. When this enchantment ends, you are cured of blindness. That's pretty sweet. And I think I have an earth damaging scythe on Milani. And that would give me the blinding. So I've got, I would have all of the, I think, I think we'd have all of the um, conditions. So I might get rid of Dunkaro and bring Milani. Oh, buried treasure. Don't forget that. And we got a bow. Poor Margaret. Let's go. It's a cool skin too. Enchantments last 19% longer. Damage plus 14. Let's give it to her. Look at that. Sweet bow. Nice one. Does she even have... Yeah, she's got 11. Let's throw that away. That's pretty sweet. Damage versus Hex, so that's even good for our party. Um, she doesn't have any enchantments, so I think I should get rid of that. That's kind of useless. Let's just, let's just put the Vampiric on there. Oh. Okay. Wait. Okay, so, so that's the... I need to get a new, like, bow handle or something for her. Anyway. She'll do an extra 5 damage per hit now. Does Eben... Does that Eben, um, Dust Aura... It doesn't specify... Oh, melee attacks. I was about to say, what if you had an Earth bow... That would be, that would be so cool. It might be nice on a trapper. You get like a sword that does earth magic or earth damage. So this would buff your attacks. And then you cast this and it blinds all nearby enemies. And then you drop your traps down. I'm thinking for like a Ranger Dervish cheeky build. I do have the one second that's fun to use. So if I use it with Fragility, immediately take 42 damage there. Oh, I forgot blue items also have inscriptions like that. Usually they're rarely max inscriptions, though. Good to keep that uh, in mind. Alright, we are at the next area, Resplendent Makun. I think this is where uh, Boca lives, I thought. Is this an outpost? Is it explorable area or is this an outpost? It is an outpost. Okay. Any... Nothing here? Let me sell off some stuff really quick. Four hundred fifty-seven gold. Let's go. Yeah, thirteen requirements. Not worth. What else can I sell? I'm gonna sell this too. I think thirteen air. Sell that. Keep those. Sell that. All right. Let's go. Resplendent Macoon. Um, is there a skills trainer here? I need to pick up another capture signet. Now that we got a Dervish, let's get a Paragon Elite. 
even though we don't really have any paragons heroes yet also i want to try that milani build she's not zen my she's using yeah an earth scythe already plus the hex a lot of hex inscriptions really good for our team because i cast a lot of hexes elias is cast cast a lot of hexes but instead of vow of strength you're going to use ebon dust aura that means instead of eve Let's go instead of Sin, let's go with uh, Menlo. There we go. I'm a little bit scared of her running Frenzy, but let's see if she dies. <laughs> All right, so now we have pretty much every, um, every condition, right? I think it's better just to get max scythe. Yeah. All right, let's go. So we are still heading to Boca. These uh, journeys in between in between missions are quite long. I think this is a boss right here, Jishol. Jishol Dark Song. Look at that. Look at that damage. And we get Song of Purification now. For 20 seconds, the next skill... Oh, the skill count goes up. Used by each ally with an earshot removes one condition. It's a adrenaline, too. No, um, no energy. It'd be fun to get a Paragon hero. I can't believe, like, you get a Dervish hero so quickly. But Paragon hero, I think, is very late into Nightfall. I wonder why they did that. It's not like the Paragon is like that overpowered as a hench or as a hero. I do kind of like Sogolon though as a henchman. I think he's worth bringing actually. He's got some healings. Yeah, I need I need to know. Does soul bind does soul bind damage the self healing or self healers? Gotta know. I gotta know. Some traders in here. Boca Amphitheater, that's where I gotta go. They did such a good job with this map. Like, this this is the detail I wanted for Kanang City, actually. I know the architecture is totally different. This is very, like, uh, Eastern, Middle Eastern, or, like, it reminds me of Turkey a lot, actually. Like a Turkish bazaar. Um, but, like, the detail here is really awesome. Like, Canning City should have been like that. Oh, that's not where I'm going. Canning City should have been this detailed. But they made it look very dull and drab. Except for, like, the cent center of Canning City. Like, the palace and stuff. This Canning City looks pretty good. But like, look at this. Detail. Ceiling, not so much. Ceiling is very boring. They could have done a lot, a lot better on the ceiling. It just looks like a floor. I mean, the floor has way more detail than the ceiling. Okay, here we go. Boca the Magnificent. Makun is the highlight of Vabi, is it not? Let us make haste to my amphitheater. Alright, let's go. 
Where is it at? I like being able to capture some elite skills while doing these quests. I think that's the most efficient way to do it. Oh no! Oh no, it automatically replaces... I hate that feature. Oh, we just lost Fever Dreams in place of Song of Purification. <laughs> oh, that sucks. I mean, at least we still have Fragility. That's really bad. What is this story about? Well, I didn't want to, to write something about a hero overcoming any odds or succeeding in the end. I guess you could say it is a traditional tragedy of epic proportions. It will take your breath away if or when you get to the end. That sounds a little bit foreshadowing. Uh, they're reenacting prophecies. Like Roar. Worst actors ever. The boy, I spend much time in these lands. Look at them now. Just look at them. How predictable. Yeah, Boca is not pleased with this performance, I guess. Striking off in a search of his destiny and new home for his people to head towards Kryda. The journey was difficult, long, and somewhat boring, but they persevered until the stone summit will not yield the frost gate quietly. I remember this. Your punishment for trespassing is death. Death, I say. Where's he at? Um, line? <laughs> it's, you cannot save me. And so the prince val valiantly laid down his life for his people. I don't remember that being in the copy of the script. Stop improvising, you troll. This play is utter tripe. Arnold, time for plan B. Here we go. Where's Arnold at? Merkel, like plan B. Merkel, like pl smash, smash. <laughs> and then the Valiant Kernan smote the Astani interlopers with a righteous fury. Oh, here's Arnold. Wait, what? This is my favorite part. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty fast. They're just rangers. Kernan's really like rangers, I noticed. They have a lot of rangers. Hey, look, my Song of Purification got rid of Milani's poison there. I need... The thing is, if I'm using Heart of Holy Flame, I need to... Yeah, I need to remove Heart of Holy Flame if I'm using Ebon Dust Aura, I realize. Actually... It's actually, I think they might, I think they might be okay. Because this just, as long as you're wielding an earth weapon, this doesn't necessarily change your weapon to a holy weapon, does it? It just means your attacks deal holy damage. That would be interesting to test out. 
if you're using Heart of Holy Flame and Ebon Dust Aura, do they conflict with each other? Good question. All right. Uh, we completed that. Let's go back to Minister Odura. Oluda. And get rid of that. Stupid. Fever dreams. And then we have extra space now. So we can get like uh, inspired hex or something. It's a pretty good one. All right, let's. Do I have any more level nineteen acolytes? So it's okay. This should make them level twenty now. Okay, just more good. Darn. Yeah, just in case, let me remove Heart of Holy Flame with something else like uh, Sand Shards. Oh, yeah, look at that damage. But she has hardly any energy gain. So expensive. Should be okay. All right, uh, Warren Kehani at the list media her party is defenseless. We gotta go back to the. Can I can I just go here? She was right outside, so maybe she's still out here. No, kind of. Let's go the other side. Oh, here's the scout. Kahani. What's wrong with her? She's... Uh... Yeah, we gotta warn Kahani. And then destroy Vanguard assaulting the temple. Oh, they're attacking with demons. Alright, that was fast. Corrupt enchantment got an elite skill from that. That's a really good one. The very good one. Five energy, ten, ten seconds to recharge. It removes enchantment and gives them health degeneration or enchantment removed or something like that. Didn't get a chance to read it all the way. That was easy. I missed out on getting a Necromancer Elite. Should I... What should I do? If I go back, can I refight? Let me try that again. It was a Necromancer, right? What was he? Ah, uh, he was a paragon. Dang, I could have captured it. I had my paragon up. Oh, stupid. I didn't have a signet of capture, though. Let's see if he comes back. Yeah. I can fight him again. Alright, we'll fight him. Deja vu. <laughs> I'm not. June talk.
Good, they're all grouped up. And then uh, Ebon Aura. The Ebon Aura made them all blind. That was... So they didn't do any damage that time. Alright, what does this one do? Anthem of Guidance. For 10 seconds, the next attack skill used by each party member with either shot cannot be blocked. That would be really good against... Um, what's his name? Shiro. That'd be a really good elite skill against Shiro because he blocks all of all of those attacks. It's very cheap. Four adrenaline. You can totally spam that. It makes your whole party unblockable. I don't know how like. Like it would definitely be helpful. But giving up an elite skill for that, I don't know. I don't know about that trade-off. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. I need to make another Crippling Anguish build, because that one's very nice, too. All right. To make sure we get Acolyte, Sosuke. There we go. And we need Margaret for this, which we have. And so next episode, we will be doing this mission? What is this? Search the halls of Chokin with Margaret. Look for information on the hidden city. Yes, yeah, so we're going to... Next episode, we'll go to the holdings of Chokin. Interesting name. Um, it says the princes have fled to the hidden city of And Adashim. This time, however, Varish will merely storm the vault and slaughter them. Someone must free them before it is too late. So they're in hiding. We gotta rescue them. All right, great. Sounds awesome. All right, anyway, uh, kind of a long episode. I'm gonna try and edit this down to be shorter than an hour. I hope. But yeah, we're back on the Nightfall playlist. Maybe the next episode I put out uh, possibly will be back in Sorrow's Furnace. But if you're following this playlist, it'll all be seamless anyway, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, thanks for following and subscribing and liking and all that. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace!